tell me about this new postgraduate year, Lisa. Um, why have you decided to implement it? Mm. So it was a bit of a brainstorm, at, you know, sort of into last year when um, seeing and observing what our graduating year, which were our level eight 2020s were missing out on because of the COVID situation and, and the uncertainty around not being able to provide them enough training opportunities, performance opportunities, which they missed all of them. So there was a really, um, a really big need for me to look at and the school to look at how we could support these young people who just happened to fall into this really, really difficult um, graduating year. And so it came about, um, you know, considering the fact that it, there was the training, because the training in that final year, that pre-professional year is really, really important to make sure our dancers are ready when, you know, to move out into the profession. And of what comes with that, of course, is the performance opportunities. So having that regional tour that they're so blessed to go on with the Australian Ballet for those three to four weeks each June, July, that chance to actually um, be absorbed into, into a, a little mini company life and to see what that's like. So, um, yeah, it was just an absolute, I wanted to provide something for these young people that missed out and uh, want to make sure that they're ready to face the world when um, hopefully we come out of the COVID, you know, if we're in a post-COVID recovery year, let's hope. And um, supporting them through em employment opportunities was another part of, of the reason to bring it in because of the fact that uh, there was so much uncertainty and, and, and travel overseas is difficult. So um, there were a the couple of really, really important needs, um, which is why it's been con um, conceptualised and put into practice. And, and I think it's going to be fantastic. So I'm really excited about it. Okay. Um, so um, were the students able to return to class at all last year? Mm. Yes, they were. So we were, I think it was something like um, almost seven months um, in remote learning, which was an extraordinary time. Yes. We were able to get them back at the end of last year, I think um, coming in around October, if, I, if my memory serves me correctly. And we had about, well, actually the level eight students were extraordinary. They only had three and three weeks, and six days before we put them under some assessment uh, um, needs because we needed to to provide them an opportunity to uh, work towards their qualifications, which we will finish off um, in this year. Um, but because we had put so much uh, effort and great work into our really mentored program that we offered them in remote learning, they were ready. And the joy and the, uh, the energy, the drive, the dedication, the passion, I mean, it was just, amazing to come back to I, I mean I had many many days where I was so overwhelmed by the incredible resilience and courage of the dancers the standard that they were at it was just amazing so for me too getting back into the studios was just uh you know really needed because my my love of this job of course is to be able to see our students progressing and not being in the studios I missed that so I felt like I was sitting at my desk a lot last year and that was just joyous to be able to witness that. I'm sure it was but but there must have been some aspects um, I, I, I have interviewed uh, Joanne Michelle um, uh, about the program uh, the online program but there must have been some aspects that they just that just weren't possible online um, mm -hmm. apart from things like Grand Allegro mm -hmm. um, and Pas de Deux and this kind of thing. Um, so um, in what practical sense um, did they miss out? Mm, mm. Yeah, it's a great question, um, Karen. So we were really, really careful about what we actually did offer. So we didn't offer just full Zoom classes. We actually offered a real mentored approach after we did a, a really thorough risk assessment. And the risk assessment was in regards to space, what space they had, what flooring, what surface, all those kinds of things. So we made a very early decision not to do any um, Allegro, in the, certainly in the first lockdown and very minor Allegro in the second lockdown. Um, and also with any turning and also any traveling. So there was a lot of elements that we couldn't achieve. Mm -hmm. But what we then did in re response to that is we really focused on um, self-awareness, self-teaching, because they ended up having to be their, their own teachers. Um, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and they ended up being their own teachers of themselves. So what we really felt that they learned was time, uh, basics, and really important things that we're able to 
focus on and then escape and fly when we finally had them back in the studio. So we saw that as a real positive. So yes, we did definitely, we missed out on pas de deux, of course, um, but we learned repertoire, the dancers learned repertoire, they learned variations. There was lots of silver linings actually. Mm. Good, good. That's great to hear. Um, so what are you going to do for a graduation ceremony for these postgraduate students? Mm. Well, we actually have to um, have a graduation ceremony for all of our dancers, actually, in a way, because we have our dancers in level six who have now moved into level seven. They need to complete their diploma of dance. Our level sevens who now moved into level eight, they need to complete their advanced diploma and the eights need to complete their graduate diploma. So we're actually working this term to fill some gaps and the gaps in particular are around the part of their unit, which we weren't able to achieve. And they'll be doing, they have started uh, commenced lessons in part of de and um, we hope to assess everyone by the end of this term and um, at this point in time we're still navigating what a, a ceremony looks like just because at the moment Prim Primo's Ballet Centre is Primo's Potter Ballet Centre is still closed to, to public which means of course we can't have families in so um, look it might end up being a virtual event but no matter what it ends up being it will be a celebration beyond um, or, or a, a great celebration. Okay, and do we have a date or rough uh, schedule for this? Um, not really. We're probably thinking somewhere along the term, around about term, the beginning of term two. And um, a part of the reason around that is, is that we needed enough time in this term to achieve a level of competency and um, uh, development in the part of the unit. So if we don't assess it to the very, very end of the term, which is where our staff feel that that would be the most beneficial to give our students the best opportunity then it'll just take a process of a couple of weeks possibly to get the qualifications and all the paperwork sorted out so possibly April but watch this space right <laughs> okay um probably a good time now to um bring in Emma who was one of the students who uh did her final year last year with you um and is returning for this postgraduate year Hello, Emma. Emma Dowling. Hello. Hi. Um, so how does it feel to be back in class? Oh, just amazing. Like when we kind of first came back, uh, like at the end of last year, towards the end of last year, back to doing classes again and then back again this year again after our break, it just feels I'm just back to myself again because for the whole of last year, we it just because ballet is such a massive part of all of our lives and it has been for so long you know it's our passion and then having it taken away from us or you know all the kind of good parts that make up ballet taken away from us it just it made I felt really lost and it just felt the whole year felt very murky to me so then coming back and dancing every day and seeing everybody and having the studio space it's it just makes so much difference. Like my mood lifted so much after classes came back and yeah, just dancing with other people again, just rather than just in the kitchen by myself, just, yeah, I just have felt so much happier and lighter. And even though I guess coming back, it's more stressful because now I've got all our rehearsals back and everything like that, because we're all in such a better headspace, it's, yeah, it just makes everything so much easier to get through. Yeah, so how feels long have you, sorry, Emma. How long have you been at the school? I joined in level six, which I believe was 2018. Okay. Yeah. So quite a few years. Yeah, this yeah, is my fault. Yeah, it's been a big, big part of your life for a long time. Yeah. So what was the biggest challenge of training at home? I would definitely say kind of keeping motivated and inspired. Because for me, I have a lot of inspiration from like my peers in my classroom, like when I'm watching in the studio, watching them dance and the teachers, you know, like showing things and telling us things, actually being in the space with other, surrounded with other dancers kind of pushes me more and makes me want to try harder and explore things. So when you're all of a sudden just cooped up in a really small space, you've got this tiny screen in front of you, you know, we don't have like live music anymore. It just kind of, it takes so much of like the fun out of it and it just makes it feel very plain and very structured. So it's just really hard to find that kind of spark of inspiration for each class. 
and then it kind of starts to get very repetitive and dull and it's then it's hard to kind of stay motivated to want to be really working hard you know so it was just it was a bit of a struggle to just keep pushing through each week knowing that we are not sure when it was going to end mm -hmm. but we just had we just had to keep pushing and that was that was the toughest part we had to be motivated but it was so hard to like actually find that motivation. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so do you think there's anything you learned from that experience that you can bring in with you into the future? Yeah, for sure. Um, as uh, Ms. Pavan said earlier, we had to learn how to teach ourselves essentially. Like, of course we still had our teachers, but because it was so, we had to be so reliant on ourselves for each class that we did, because they, you know, they can only see so much through the screen. So we have to be really strict with ourselves to know that we're working hard each yeah. class. We're still working on our technique and not forgetting about our artistry where we can. And, you know, you had to just be very self-disciplined to keep improving um, and not let yourself slip back. And obviously once, you know, you move on into companies um, in the future, you're not going to get as much feedback from the directors and the ballet mistresses and ballet masters. So you have to know how to work for yourself and how to keep pushing yourself to improve rather than just becoming complacent and going backwards. So that's definitely like a really important skill that we all had to learn and yeah, we'll have to use it again in the future. Yeah. Well, I, I suppose, and this is a, a question for both of you, um, uh, would you call that an upside uh, are there upsides now that you will look back on and think well actually that part of it wasn't so bad yeah I would definitely say yeah like looking back it's definitely an upside like during it it was tough to kind of find many good things but looking back on it kind of seeing yeah where we've come from and now I can I can kind of notice a difference like in class there's things that I think about now just for myself that I wouldn't have thought about beforehand because it's kind of like it just brought this new awareness to each class and it, not even just in class but you know when we're doing our rehearsals and performances there's just yeah different things te technique things mostly um because that's mostly what we had to work on but yeah it's definitely made a change and a good thing about it. yeah Lisa? And, and I would add to that, Karen, that what we took out of it as far as the teaching staff and, you know, my greatest admiration for them to get up every day and, and motivate the students because, uh, wow, that was really a challenge as well. And, and as Emma explained there, um, you know, people would be, maybe they were up one day and another dancer might have been down. So it was a really varied kind of set of skills uh, needed to, to manage the group. Um, but the, I think what we really learned and what we've taken forward as, as silver lining is, is, is that time um, is really, really uh, on our side. And when we looked at the fact that we could only offer them, you know, a, a, a portion of the training, how we focused on that portion of the training that helped them to then understand those basics and their own awareness of their body because sometimes in the studio because you're trying to get through your curriculum you're trying to get through teaching this that and the other you might not have the time mm. to really focus on those things and if those things are really secure and in the body and the dancer understands it in their own body then they have the ability to do anything um, you know, they can really grow from that. So if we're in the studios and you're, um, you know, you're doing a, a double soda bask, for example, and you're practicing that double soda bask and it's not quite working because you need to achieve that double soda bask by actually having skills and the skill and the ability to go, well, where is it in my body that I need to find that? So sometimes when you're flying across the room, you're not really focusing on the fundamentals as such. <clears throat> you're, you're working more globally. So really working internally has been a really um, a big lesson that we've learned and, and one that the teaching staff and I have discussed about what that we want to um, bring forward into our teaching. It's really important to allow also the student time after a correction is given for them to, to apply it to their body. Because as teachers, you, you, you're wanting to get through your class as well. So maybe we don't give enough time. So there's some of the silver linings that we've really learned. Um, yeah. And yeah, um, definitely looked at um, opportunities for the dancers to 
uh, look and learn through YouTube and, and other forms of learning. That was really beneficial as well. I'm not sure if you want to speak to that, Emma, just in some yeah. of the repertoire you learned things. Yeah, for sure. Definitely, especially with um, my Love Late teacher, um, Miss Michelle, we, we looked at a lot of um, YouTube clips and for variations and things and she would find ballets and it was that was really helpful for the inspiration part that I was um, saying earlier was really hard to find. So then watching a, a performance on stage from somebody, obviously like online, but it it really kind of like helped us go, okay, wait, no, I remember what I want to do with this. Or, and it just kind of gives us little bits of inspiration that we can kind of draw on. And then it gets us excited for what we know is to come eventually. So it definitely helps and just to watch other dancers as well from different companies kind of learn from them and find different things that you might not think to explore yeah yeah, yeah. that's really interesting I mean um between you you've both sort of gone from um self-reflection um you sort of found yourself with more opportunity to look within to your own uh internal resources and capabilities while at the same time it's given you time to look outside yourselves from what is often you know that the busy um but small world of the the dance studio and and the australian ballet school and that to the to beyond that for inspiration so mm -hmm. so it's kind of worked in both ways hasn't it I think so, and uh, in including in that is, you know, the understanding around the anatomy and the conditioning and even terminology. Um, our level five teachers were working with their students on terminology, and if you understand what the step means, um, you know, fuete means and, and tondu means, um, it's a different language. It actually helps you then be able to manage the steps. So there was, you know, lots of little things like that. I, I absolutely agree with you, reflection, and resilience. I mean, I know that word is used a lot, but we saw so much resilience in our young people and that will step, put them in great stead and all of us, I think, for, for moving forward and particularly in this vocation where you need to have, you know, you need to have your armour against, you know, for you and to be able to handle the ups and downs and the ebbs and flows of, of casting and selection and all those things that go with being in a professional ballet company so resilience is definitely our um number one word i think it was the word for the year. Taken forward. <laughs> i think so yes 